All right, well, I think we're good to go. Welcome, everybody. I'm Folygon, and we are going to be uh, working on some cool stuff today. Some cool stuff in ZBrush. One second here while I make sure that this is actually streaming. I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> all right, uh, I think we're all set to go. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, so if you've been following along with some of my past streams here on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel, I have been uh, been creating these little style studies, and uh, we started off. I don't have the one that I started off with actually, but we started off with a sphere, uh, sculpted that that up into a, a big buff boy, a big buff boy head is what I've been calling him. Took that, uh, sculpted it into this guy over here on the left. Took him, morphed him into this guy in the middle, and then took him and morphed him into this gal over on the far right. I've posted a few of these up on uh, on my my Twitter and ArtStation and stuff. So if you guys are looking for uh, links to the original artists, uh, I believe it's uh, Miji Lee over here on the far left, and uh, and these both are by David uh, Loyaha or something around similar to that. Again, the links are over on my uh, my social stuff. Uh, but yeah, so I've been doing these these little style studies. Uh, and today uh, we've kind of switched gears from doing these little these little kind of bust projects into more of a full character. And I've kind of started on this this morning on my uh, on my stream on my channel. There's a link up here in the in the top somewhere. It's just Twitch slash Folygon with an underscore at the end. Welcome, welcome, guys. Let me make sure. All right, cool. <laughs> Making sure my mic wasn't muted. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna be working on this gal. Let's see. Make sure that that's gonna stay in place. And well, bam! This is a concept by the artist, uh, formerly formerly known as Shep, still known as Shep, to my knowledge. Uh, you can just Google Twitter Shep, and I'm sure you'll find her. Very popular artist has a ton of really cool concepts. I, uh, I unfortunately do not know her real name uh, off the top of my head. But yeah, we've been uh, starting on this uh, at the beginning uh, this morning. Let's see here. I think I also have, just for those who are curious, actually I have it here in ZBrush in my light box. A little bit of a base mesh that we started with. This is a base mesh that I created while working on a recent witch character. Uh, and I think I have that posted up on my art station. You guys can check her out if you're interested in that. I'm just fully gone on everything. But yeah, it was a lot of fun to work on this character. And during that process, I, uh, I created this base mesh that I could use with future characters. So this is what we started with, and now we've kind of warped proportions and pushed things around and pulled things around. A lot of things are still pretty messy, uh, but we're, we're getting there, slowly but surely. Everything looks bad until it doesn't. And what we're going to be working on specifically for this character is going to be up here in the the face, the head region. So we're still kind of doing one of those style studies that I've been working on. But uh, we're going to be creating some hair, uh, maybe part of this headdress or uh, ornamental piece here, some hard surf a little bit of hard surface modeling. Might be able to get uh, to do some stuff with the Z modeler brush. I know people always have some questions about that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we can look at some some wrappings here. I have a couple ideas for, for different ways we can tackle that. But yes, this character is pushed pretty far, uh, has some really interesting stuff going on in the silhouette. Just kind of started on this, so it's still, uh, still got a long way to go. But what we are going to do is focus up here on the face. So before we do that, let's hide just about everything. I don't know. I, sometimes I like to keep a little bit of the the like torso in here. I, I think it's fine. We just hide it, right? And then we can get in here and start looking at some of this stuff in the face. Now for this character, oh gosh, that dog's going crazy. <laughs> uh, and welcome everybody. I see that uh, there's a bunch more people jumping in here now. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Um, so let's see. I was thinking, I was thinking that because the mouth and nose and everything are kind of covered up here, wrapped up, it would be totally fine if we just closed that, dynameshed it up, and uh, got all those holes closed up and just destroyed a lot of this form. Oh, we don't want that poly paint. 
But I think I'm just gonna leave it for now and maybe we can play with that a little bit more. But like I said, this is a base mesh that uh, I created for another character and I'm reusing it here. Some of the differences in the face are, are pretty drastic, but let's go ahead and just start by creating hair and I think that'll be a good place for us to start so you guys can see my process for that. So let's duplicate our head and start painting a mask. Now, when I am, I'm also gonna move my light because that's pretty distracting. I'm just gonna shift that up. And there are also uh, some pretty harsh angles here in the brows and some other stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, get this a lot closer to, to what we got going on here. Let's get a head or uh, what I typically call a, uh, a it's kind of like a bald cap. I call it a hair cap, but <laughs> essentially you just mask off your base layer here. For this though, it's gonna be a little bit different, I think. Let's just get a straight cut here. I'm gonna use my slice curve, because I think this is gonna be the easiest way to do this. And just slice off the top of her dome, just like that. So now we just have this piece. I could probably even make that a little bit higher. Delete hidden. Uh, now I would maybe close holes on this. I'm actually gonna wait to close holes. First, let's just scale that up. We could also inflate this. When you have anything, <laughs> Z-Hawk, long time no see, welcome back, man. Uh, when, you have, uh, when you have something that has an open hole like that, you can uh, run a deformation inflate on it without it freaking out the geometry on the corners. If you do close holes because it's pushing out along the normal of the polygons, I'll show this real quick so you guys can see. Deformation inflate. Oh, get all this awkward stretching. And same thing would happen if you close holes with the Dynamesh. But when it's open, you can inflate without any problems and it'll be just fine. Or at least for the most part it should be. Uh, let's see. So a quick little hair cap. We can create additional uh, strands of hair around here for some of this. For these uh, front little kind of sideburny like pieces just in front of the ear, the strands in front of the ear there, I will use my cube tube brush. And this is pretty much a curved tube snap brush, just modified. A tri parts welded brush that just gives me a very clean tube of geometry and it has a nice uh, nice topology flow. A little bit better than what you would get with the curve, uh, curve tube snap if you set the modifier to four. If you set the modifier to four, actually if you set the modifier to any number, that, de that defines how many, uh, how many uh, sides of that you're gonna have. So if it's set to four, and right now it is, the default is eight in your brush modifiers here, brush mod, set that to four. And you can get a similar effect to my brush here. But you do end up getting, uh, unfortunately, that little cross section. So you'll have to either uh, delete those edges or uh, delete that, uh, those four faces and like rebridge that, which is what I typically do. That's why I created this brush. A little bit, a little bit easier, a little bit nicer for specifically this shape. So just start with that basic shape there. We'll pull down and let's see, probably do some creasing as well. So we can see what that looks like without looking like a tube of sausage. There we go. And I'm using the transpose tool right now to quickly scale in some areas to essentially make that a lot more thin. And just mask off some points, move some stuff around. And I just wanna keep these edge loops a little bit more even, just so they're nice and clean. I like to keep stuff clean, if you've seen any of my streams or work in the past. Keep stuff as clean as I can. All right, so we want this to be wider for sure. And I am just using the uh, move option here on the transpose line, if you don't know about this one. It essentially, uh, it's essentially a stretch is what I would kind of call it. It's a little different. 
a little different than your normal move. I think you can get a similar effect with the 3D gizmo as well. Alright, so let's start on this back side. So I can insert additional uh, little strands of hair, kind of like what we got there. We also got a nice like little kind of flip up turn here that I can see happening. And I would like to get that in, but I think we'll wait to do that. Let's get the rest of this. So let's come on back here. Oh, we got like twice as many people in here now. Welcome everybody. I will very quickly show these off one more time, just since we got everybody everybody in here now, now that we're all set. So if you guys uh, have not been following along, I uh, took a sphere, you know, sculpted up a character from scratch, uh, and then I've been taking that base character that I made and sculpting that character into other characters. So we started with uh, one before this one that I don't have loaded in, went to this one, went to this dude here, and then we went to this uh, this gal most recently. Uh, and if you're interested in finding those 2D concept artists, uh, there are some links over on my my social media accounts. Uh, just Google Folygon and you'll, you'll be sure to find me. But I'm thinking for, so back to this real quick here. I'm thinking that it might be a little bit easier, a little bit faster, if instead of making additional strands of hair, what we could do is slice off this back piece here and then just like stretch this back and start shaping this up into the back portion of her hair. And it's a little messy right now. That's why I like to keep stuff low poly. Kind of like this strand, which is the only reason I would, would do it that way. If we can do this a little bit faster, I'm always into trying to find shortcuts. There's always a million different ways to do everything. It's just about finding whatever is most uh, efficient, whatever's fastest for you. And then we could maybe like push that behind her hair and play around with that. So this is how I would go about starting to block out something like this hair. And then maybe we could slice this up and add additional strands. We're getting a very uh, very wonky silhouette though, because of the way I did that really rough and quick. But if that works for you, then go for it. I think, I think what I would prefer to do is do it the same way that I did for these pieces, just so we can keep it clean. Another, here, I have an in-between way. What we can do Grab our curve brush again and draw out across here. Let's lower our Z intensity. Let's squash that in. Pull out all the way around. Looks good. And then I'll essentially pull down on that and we'll use that for our hair. And it's not symmetrical, so a quick mirror and weld will take care of that. I just want to make sure that that is pulled all the way across so that when I mirror and weld, it won't completely freak out around this middle section. I don't want anything overlapping there. All right, so let's grab all these polys and we'll keep this nice and low. Pull this down and then we can even use the Z modeler brush on our hair mentioned we try to use the Z modeler brush. I'll try to find other excuses to use it too. I'm always, always looking for excuses to play with that more. Let's, uh, let's grab our Z modeler and start creasing up a few edges here. I'm just gonna keep this all stiff. Make sure that that's hard edge there, creased. And then let's start realigning some of this. And I will either, I don't know, we'll figure that out in a sec for this area around the ear. First, let's try to get the, the main shape. So Z Modeler Brush, awesome to use for inserting poly loops really quick. There's actually a little bit of a, another way that you can insert poly loops that I like to do. 
that is sometimes faster. Just kind of depends on the situation. I'll show you guys that here in a sec. Let's use transparency. Oh, let me mask this off. So let's say we want a couple more edge loops in here. Instead of using the Z modeler brush, you can do it the old fashioned way where <laughs> you have your slice curve brush that's just up in your control shift selection brushes. So you have your select lasso, all that clip, slice, trim. I'm using the slice curve. And when you use this on a low poly piece, it inserts an edge loop. It's essentially just splitting those polygons. So it's a quick way for you to insert edge loops working this way. Take that and start using those edge loops to our advantage. I'll just start kind of moving all of these. And this last couple here. What I love about working with low poly stuff in ZBrush is that you can also use all your other brushes like your move brush and all this good stuff, it's so nice. Makes me feel right at home. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, bridge the two pieces of hair with Z Modeler by, by deleting the back faces and then bridging. It's a great idea, I do that very often. Uh, then you still need to make space for the ear. Correct, that's why I've split these the way I have, at least for now. But yes, looking for an excuse to use that Z Modeler brush is always, is always fun. Love me some Z Modeler. Let's see. Uh, does Z Modeler work with red wax? Uh, unfortunately, no. It's a, it's a common, commonly known issue. Uh, none of your brushes work with the red wax material. It's weird. I, I can't really explain it. <laughs> and... <laughs> uh, vital... Vital Ire uh, removed red wax from their material list. How cruel. That's hilarious. Uh, so we got this little bit of an angle up here. I think uh, that's fine. And then we'll just kind of pull that through to there. Right. And then for the area behind the ear. So let's see, transparency. Let's just delete, whoops, wrong selection tool. Let's delete all these. There's, a, there's so many ways to do this. So I could delete all these and then uh, bridge the holes. Or we can use our Z Modeler Q Mesh brush. Q Mesh is awesome at, you know, wiping away all these polygons really quick. You can also do them all at once. Uh, the way I did that was uh, you Alt, click, and drag to essentially select multiple polygons at once, and then you can just swipe them away, just like that, pretty easy. Let's uh, crease those up again, once more. And she doesn't want this big bald spot here, I assume. So we will try to pull her hair behind her ear a little bit better than what we've done thus far. Make it a lot more thin as well. It's uh, pretty thick. I would only make it that thick if I was needing to for printing or something. So let's thin all that out. Could also run a deformation uh, inflate in the negative there instead of just doing it all by hand with the move brush. Like I said, there's always there's always a billion ways to do everything here. Just about finding what works for you. Let's see. I'll just try to thin out the rest of this hair real quick. That's fun. <laughs> Let's see. And then if I wanted to make a really clean connection point up here, I, I'm personally, I'm totally fine with the way this is set up. And then I can just work with the hair 
uh, in this low poly state for these strands for as long as possible. And then once I wanted to uh, merge this all together, I would add some subdivs to all this and then start combining things with either Dynamesh or Live Boolean. Either or, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Typically I'll just do stuff with Dynamesh since it's a lot faster. But just getting some stuff in there, if we wanted to go through and start adding additional strokes, I say nay for now at least. But we can maybe, if we wanna just see what that's looking like. Silhouette wise, poly paint can be very helpful. Let me sample that color on the face. Something a little bit lighter. I already have a, uh, uh, just cause I didn't have it selected. A very pink up there. Uh, I already have some poly paint here on the face. I think I'll just leave this for now. And this is, I've kind of painted in some of these highlights and shadows in different areas. So I'll stick with that for now. One thing I do want to do though is add a poly loop in here. Whoops, and not what I wanted. Uh, insert poly loop, there we go. Just so that wraps around the head a little nicer. Uh, but from the silhouette with perspective on, angle and all that, the way this is done, it's like, uh, from what I can tell, her hair, at least this front piece, is like covering up most of her ears. So maybe we could pull that back some more. Really just, what's what's also great about keeping stuff low poly like this is that, whoa, dang, those are going every which way. Uh, it, keeping stuff low poly like this is it forces you to uh, not get caught up in, in all the crazy, crazy details and everything, or start moving on to your secondary forms too quickly. I'm gonna blend this into the ear a little bit right now. I'm more concerned about making sure that this feels right in the silhouette before I do anything else. What I'm looking at is the jawline flowing back there and where that's hitting on the neck, how close that is to the neck. I would say that this is probably fine for now. And we can mess with that some more later. Uh, but we can also do some hard surface modeling for our little snake guy up here and that little circlet. I don't know, I guess, what would you call that? Not not quite a tiara, but circlet? I don't know, that sounds right. Sounds good to me. Uh, let's see. I think the ear is covered a bit more by the hair. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what we were kind of doing there. We'll, we're gonna mess with that as well. I'll probably change the angle of the ears a little bit on the head and probably work on flattening out some of the sides of the head here. These things are getting a little bit too rounded back there after I started changing some stuff on this. So I'd probably mask off some stuff around the ear and either trim this, I like to use the trim dynamic brush or just use a move brush I feel like I use the move brush for just about everything. I, we worked on this head a little bit during our stream this morning over on my channel, but we didn't really do too much. Uh, I think the only thing that we really did was start to change some of the silhouette. Because the way just looking at the hit that's happening there on the cheek from the three-quarter view. I still think that can change quite a bit, which is why I was kind of wanting to uh, like destroy most of this form so that when we started wrapping that up, we could get something, something nice and flat there. Once we do go to wrap that, though, uh, there's, there's more than a few techniques for doing that. Um, I haven't really decided, but if anybody has something particular that they would like to see. For example, there is an awesome technique using uh, 
just just using straight up curve brushes, you know, manually wrapping around there. There's a little bit of a more difficult technique, I, in my opinion, using the slice curve brush, which we're gonna use right now. I'm gonna use the, I also wanna change this shape on the head for the hair. I don't like that too much. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about that when we get to that stage, but what I'm going to do right now is something I like to do a lot slice some stuff up and we got this high poly edge loop here of geometry but we don't want that to be high poly do we we want something we can work with let's go into z remesher drop that down really low because this is just an edge Ooh, z remesher you did a terrible job uh a lot of the time you'll run into problems like this uh sometimes it'll it'll understand that it wants you to have an edge loop through there and we'll do it nice and clean for you. It just kind of depends on the shape and how, what kind of mood ZBrush is in. So uh, to fix that, I'm gonna turn on keep groups and just add one more slice through the middle. And that should inform to ZBrush that I just want that to be an edge loop just like that. And it, for some reason, freaked out a little bit back here, but that's a really uh, easy fix, or at least it should be. Let's see. There we go. Cool, we'll do that. We'll also delete this. And then typically when I go about uh, using this technique for this stuff, there's just too many edge loops, so I I might quickly run through and delete a few of these if there's too many. Uh, really, it's not a huge deal, but do keep in mind that the lower your polygon count uh, is, the easier it will be to manipulate some of this stuff. And then it's really easy to get in here and add thickness and everything else. We can pull that out. Uh, basically, let's look at the angle and thickness right now. I think that's all good. Like I said, I want to change the hair shape here. I'm going to make this a little bit less tapered. Feels like it's tapering really strongly. And again, having those less Le uh, having less points here makes this a lot easier. Just kind of manipulating that a little bit. And then we can use the Z modeler again to extrude all polygons. Add a little bit of thickness in there. And we have a circlet. But when you do this, you want to go down in your display properties. If you have double on, you want to make sure that that's off so that your normals are facing the right way. Let's do a couple creases. And voila, we have the beginnings of a circlet. Side effects, welcome back. How's it going? Cobra is going to, going to be cool to make. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I haven't decided how to do it yet. It's very, very tiny here. I might blow that up. Let's see. Let's go in the scale. Make sure that that's not covering my, my screen or junk here too much. Her hand is also crazy. I haven't done too much with that yet. Um, so yeah, let's see. Ooh, I also remembered that I have a cool new technique that I wanted to show you guys. That I recently came up with for something. I know that sounds very vague, but I'll show you guys here in a little bit. It has to do with uh, patterns. All right, so we got our basic circlet. How do we want to do our Cobra? Uh, probably the fastest way, at least for me, uh, is just to grab a, a, a tube of geometry or a sphere and just wrap that up there really quick and start shaping that up. 
Uh, we could also use some more clean geometry, but who wants to do that? I'll clean it up after the fact. Give me a tube. That is not the tube I wanted. That's okay. We'll make it work. All right, so first, getting this bend forward. And very quickly, I'm just gonna move this around, destroy a lot of this. And just start using my move brush to get that basic shape. And just get this really quick. Doesn't have to be clean. Let's see. That tapers a little bit more smoothly. And I think it's quite a bit taller. Make sure that's looking cool from the silhouette. Uh, and taper a little bit more smoothly. Let's see. What I miss? Uh, does ZBrush have a fixed normals or something? Um, you know there is. I, I flipped my normals because they were facing the wrong way. There is some mesh integrity options somewhere. Uh, off the top of my head. I can't remember where those are. I'm sure if I'm sure somebody else can Google it or maybe knows off the top of their head. It's been a while since I've had to do stuff with that. But yeah, I was just I was just flipping my flipping my normals. Nothing crazy. Um Cesaru, welcome to the stream. What's going on? Uh, display proper or yeah, for flipping your normals, it's down in tool display or display properties. Uh, mesh integrity is in modified topology. I was in the right place then. Uh, I just missed it. I can't read very well. <laughs> Under geometry, that's exactly where I was. Anyway, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Play around with it if you're having trouble. I. I don't know. I don't know how you could. I don't really know how you could end up with a crap ton of differently flipped normals in ZBrush, unless you're importing something from somewhere else. But then why would you not fix it in that other thing, that other program, rather than import it in here and try to fix it that way? You can also just like, if you don't care topology-wise, just start dynameshing stuff and using close holes operations to, to fix stuff that way. Let's get back to our snake. A snake. Don't steep on snake. And this... Pull a little bit more forward and down. And size-wise... Obviously, we need to round that out. It's a little bit high in the Dynamesh. Drop that way down. Uh, even lower, please. There we go. So, scale, size-wise, like I was saying, it's maybe a little bit too tall, a little bit too big. That's fine though. Let's just leave it where it is for now and continue to sculpt these additional forms on here. So actually, you know what? The way I would prefer to do this, maybe even have this as two separate meshes for this flat hooded part and then another mesh for this rounded piece. It's not a bad idea. Let's just make sure that our silhouette's looking nice and clean here from every single angle. And we'll try that. One step at a time. And then... We can 
do something like this. Such a bad mask. Oh no. Something like that. I know, it doesn't look great. We'll polygroup it, control W. So you remesh keep groups, yes please. Oh no, I missed, I missed all the chats. Hold on a sec, guys. Let's see. Yes, unless you, <laughs> unless you import something very, very poorly. It's very rare that you will, I think, have normal issues. Uh, yeah, if, if you are ever running an extract or zero mesh extract all polygons on a thin plane, your normals will pretty much always be flipped, and it doesn't really matter which way you extract that geometry. Uh, it's it's just the way it does it. <laughs> uh, Ben Angelus, I need some help. Well, I don't know a Ben Angelus. I do know a Ben D Angelus, though. I don't know. I don't know where you got this. The D is not my middle name. That's just that's just how you spell my last name. <laughs> uh, sure, ask any questions you need, and I'll uh, help with what I can. Um, encountering a ZBrush error. Oh no. That's not good. I don't like encountering ZBrush errors. All right, so we're gonna flatten this hood. And then... Let's just add a tube. I'm gonna fix my tube though. So we had that modifier set to four, if you guys remember. Put it back on the default, which is eight. And we'll just draw that out, follow that, sure. Looks good to me. Let's make that a little bit larger. All right, now we can mess with that. We can thin out this hood. on that shape there. We'll taper that a little bit more up towards the top as well, I think. Uh, let's see. When I have perspective on on my large ZBrush project, it only affects certain subtools. Uh, that might be because of uh, the scale of your objects in your scene. You might need to really uh, bump up your perspective settings. You might need to really crank that for it to affect it. Your, 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 the scale of your object in your scene might just be really crazy. ZBrush likes to keep stuff right around two units or so in size. So if you can, you might you might need to scale some stuff down. Check on the scale of your objects and see if see if that's the issue. That would be my first guess. And uh, <laughs> gotta rest your autocorrect. Oh, I don't use, I hate autocorrect, or at least I use it on my phone. I don't, I, I, I'm assuming that you're not watching on mobile. Forget that's a possibility. All right, let's clean up the, whoa, my bad. I hate when I have dynamic on and I accidentally subdivide with dynamic on. That That is a time that I would want a warning message where ZBrush would have a toggle to not allow that to happen. Or or better yet, if I have subdivisions, just toggle off dynamic subdivs automatically. 
That'd be nice. If that's possible. Don't know if that's the if that is though. Alright, let's thin this out on the other side a little bit more. then up here it looks like you know it just tapers down into a point slowly until it gets to the head and then it I'll just kind of something like that and we can merge these together and work on them as one piece of geometry Maybe I'll keep them separated so that I can do the little stripey texture just on this guy. Let's see. Ben DeAngelis of Light's Justice. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds really nice. I'll take it. <laughs> um, hmm. Where's a good place to get concepts to sculpt? ArtStation's a great place. Pinterest, Twitter, the internet, friends. I don't know, your dog. <laughs> um, what about getting permission? Yeah, I think you should get permission. If you're not, if you're just doing it for yourself though, you, you don't need to, but I think it's a nice thing, nice thing to do. Hmm. Uh, so the scale sounds like it might be the issue. You're importing them at 50 times size over. Yeah, I don't know. Try that. That that sounds like it might be the problem to me. Just want zero assistance to turn off the Dynamesh. Let's see. I missed a lot of chats. I apologize. Hannibal, welcome back, man. Uh, let's all go see the. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, how many times is ZBrush sculpt or ZBrush crash while you sculpt? Not very often, not very often anymore. Uh, back in some of the older versions, back uh, back even a, a few versions ago, it crashed a lot more than it does now. It hardly ever crashes for me, and when it does crash, I always, like without fail, get a. Uh, not always, ninety. I would say ninety nine percent of the time. I old <laughs> sixty percent of the time it works every time. Ninety nine percent percent of the time I get a uh, a recovered Z tool, and then I would say probably about eighty percent of the time I'll get a ZBrush project that will actually have the uh, the additional uh, tools in there. But I'll, I'll pretty much always just grab the tool that I want. I don't I don't typically have a bunch of stuff in a project unless I'm just keeping some stuff around so I can show it off on stream or something like that. So you guys can see some of the other characters that we've been working on. But yeah, I don't know, it doesn't crash, it doesn't crash too often. It used to be a heck of a lot worse, that's for sure. Let's see. Um, what about, uh, Kui, right? I'm gonna post it on. I'm not exactly sure what you're trying to say. Let's see, wouldn't I have to have permission? Uh, if you're, if you're just posting, so, if you are, like I said, if you find a 2D concept that you really like, and you want to try sculpting it in 3D or modeling that, I, I, that's your right. I mean, go crazy. I think it's nice to, you know, always ask the the concept artist. Say, hey, do you mind if I do this in 3D? There, there are very rare cases where it might be some kind of personal project that they're working on, and they don't want other people doing anything with that, which is totally cool. I think you should respect that. But if you're just doing it for your own own stuff. Always give a, I mean, no matter what, always give a, 
give credit where it's due. But if you're just, you're not making any money off of it, you're just doing your own thing, go crazy. If you're trying to make money off of it, then for sure <laughs> you should be uh, asking the artist and at least, you know, hey, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm going to sculpt this and sell it, by the way. Let's merge these together now. Now that we've spent long enough rambling. I'll just merge those together. And I don't need those subdivs. What I do need is to dynamesh. Let's see, let's get a little bit more a little bit more of that curve in there. And... I don't know. Can I exaggerate that a bit more? I think it needs to be... a little shorter. Let's see. How's that feel, perspective-wise? Maybe I could like flare that out a bit more. I don't know. I think it's fine for now. I only have one angle that I'm going off of here. If anything, I would just like round that out some more. But yeah, let's go ahead and merge those. So I'll just do a quick little dynamesh, actually. Push that in. Make sure that that's rounding out. So let's do just a 400 or so is probably fine. Let's see, sure. Looks good to me. And let's start sculpting up this snake head here at the top. So how do we want to do that? Just kind of pull around up here. Get some additional form. Pull to a point. Like, looks like it gets a little bit wider at the, the point that that transitions. Either that or it's uh, the jaw coming down or something. Hmm. Like right there. Ah, my mouse. And I always show that little rotation mark. try this and we can also do the gems on the actual circlet but for the eyes we'll have to warp them a little bit so I'm just gonna use an insert sphere plop that on there now it looks like snack don't steep on snack And I'll just use the transpose line to like pull that. And if I was gonna scale, so I wanna scale these down, right? If I do that though, they scale in towards the middle. So I'll turn on local symmetry and they'll scale in uh, along, along themselves. And let's start rotating these. Maybe make them a little bit more thin. Something like that. Very, very spooky. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you're just doing stuff for your own, you're, you're cool. Uh, when should you merge subtools together? Um, whenever it's appropriate. That's kind of the short answer, but let's see. For instance, if I'm making a mech bot, 
Should I keep all parts in their own subtool? I know that it's kind of hard, kind of sculptor preference. Yeah, uh, I would say it's, it's pretty much just kind of comes down to you, man. Um, so like with this hair, I've started off, I don't know, with mech, with like mech stuff, for anything that looks like it should be separated, I would probably just separate it. Uh, for the reason I split stuff off into other subtools and separate parts is because it's easier uh, to control more simple shapes. Like with this, I did this as two separate things just because it was easier to do it that way. And then, then I can merge them together after the fact and it's not a big deal. Yeah, I don't know. If, if, if you're having trouble figuring out when to do that, I would say that that's probably just kind of a mileage issue. Just keep practicing it and you'll figure out when exactly you need to do that. And when I say mileage issue, I just mean you need to do it more. And you'll, you'll find out what works best for you. Never underestimate time. It's the one thing that everybody has to do. This is so small compared to the, the face. I don't wanna sit here and sculpt it forever, but I was just trying to tighten up one of these real quick. Just a little bit. Say I don't want to sit here and mess with this all night, but here I am making it super, trying to make it a lot more clean. Not super clean, but you know, you guys know I like to make stuff real clean. What is that? Come on. I didn't ask for you. Extra little mask. Let's see, Z remesh, 1K, keep groups on, see what that does. I don't necessarily need to project anything here. Let's see how that's reading from a, uh, a proper distance. Uh, it seems that some things should be merged and others not so much. Yeah, um, yeah, yes. <laughs> like, for instance, on this guy, his hair, which the, uh, the color is a little messed up on right now, but here, a quick, uh, quick fill in there. That looks fine. So on this guy's hair, the way I started uh, sculpting this, it's very simple, right? Really simple shape. And it's not, it's not even particularly well done. Like if you're looking at the, some of these internal silhouette lines, there's a lot of stuff that I could have adjusted, but I, I wasn't gonna sit here and mess with this hair forever. But anyway, this hair didn't start as a single mesh. It started off as, I think, so I did one piece that was essentially just masking off the hair, this basic hair shape here that I was gonna extract, whoops, this basic hair shape that I was going to extract from the face, so that. And then from there, I just threw a sphere on top of his head right here, and then I started sculpting that into this big shape 
And then after doing that a few times on this part and pulling up some of that other piece, so it's two separate pieces, then I just eventually dynameshed them together and kept uh, kept moving forward on them. So, I don't know, just kind of a, you'll figure it out the more you do it kind of thing. It's impossible for me to give like a universal at this stage, you know, that's when you should merge stuff together. It, it really depends. Yeah, absolutely, man. My pleasure. Alright, I am uh, probably going to leave that how it is for a little bit, and we can return to that a little bit later. But we got all the parts and pieces in, that's the important thing. The other place where we need some of that, some more of that is, uh, is these little gemstones. We also would, we'll do this later, but uh, a little bit of, um, some kind of like stripe, whoops, some kind of like quick stripes across the, the belly of the snake. We don't have to do that right this second though. Uh, for for these little gems around the circlet, I would probably just do an insert sphere and then uh, Or an insert custom shape. It looks like they're just spheres or squash uh, Squashed spheres. So something like that. It looks like maybe there's like a larger one back here At least it looks really big um, I'll leave that Looks like it's about this size. I don't know. I don't know what's going on back there. So we'll just grab our IMM primitive, and I want my just insert sphere. And with insert brushes, a really cool thing that you can do is start dragging out your shape and then hold the control key. And that will make the shape that you're inserting always the same size according to the draw size of your brush. So if I make my brush, let's say 25, all right, we'll leave that one on there and then control uh, start dragging and then hold control we'll make that size a little bit closer to what I'm looking for there I think that feels pretty good I could maybe go a little bit bigger but we'll leave that for now another cool thing that we can do with our insert brushes is go into the brush depth menu and pull this down we'll say right around there for the embed and now when I draw that out it's embedding roughly, uh, looks like about halfway there for that sphere. So I think that's pretty good for what I want. Maybe a little bit more. Let's let's say, like, we'll come back. Where'd you go? Like minus ten ish. Sure. And just control click and drag that out. Not super centered. I'm not too worried about it. We can always adjust that later. And then we can just, you know, very quickly go through and always make these the exact same size. If you want to uh, be even more accurate with that, like, because I, I, I might start modifying these, I might start like, oh, that's too rounded, it's sticking out too far. So I'll start squashing that. What I would recommend doing is insert or creating a custom insert mesh so you're not just inserting a sphere. And then we can also, let's see, we also want to delete all that garbage. We already have that. And if we want to adjust the height of these, we can just kind of eyeball this really quick. So I would like to do that. Headband isn't exactly uh, exactly straight, is it? So cool thing that you can do with the transpose line. Yeah. Snap to that surface, pull this down a little bit, and then clip. Not sure why it clipped like that. Uh, it's because we're facing in here. Point that straight up. Change that angle this down and you can start clipping off your edge terrible angle though so instead hmm could also run a slice curve through that and just reclose the holes 
think I'll just very quickly modify this. There's also, instead of using a transpose, you can actually use your, where's clip, clip curve. Just like that. So what the clip brush does, that so the slice brush actually slices the geometry, the clip curve brush, whoops, wrong way. What the clip brush does is it actually takes everything that's lower than that grayed out line and it squishes it up. So it's cool on low poly stuff, it's awesome, but on some geometry that's a little bit more dense, it ends up uh, causing some issues. So let's close holes here. So if I were to draw this flat, it's like, oh yeah, clipped that. But as I rotate around, you'll see that actually it took everything that was on this side here and just smushed it this way. So in this instance, it's not super great. I would prefer to slice it in that instance. Let's remesh here. Why is everything on 2.5? Baxter, welcome to the stream. How you doing tonight? I don't know what's dope, but thank you. Glad to have you here. Oh, stream is lagging a little bit on my end. Hopefully not for you guys. It's not too bad. I've just real quick remeshed our the top of our hair. get something a little bit more workable. If we want, I, I at, at this point, I wouldn't really start applying poly paint to all this stuff. I like to keep it geometric for the most part, but if we wanted to, I don't think it would hurt anything. If you like to go through here and very quickly, I like to use low RGB settings when I'm painting. Grab our. Oh, can I not get that blue? Fill in the object there. And for these, you can just sample these. The uh, V key swaps your color so you can sample multiple things at once if you're trying to do stuff a little bit faster. Whoops. Make sure our RGB is up all the way. I think I screwed that up on the eyes as well. I did. That's my bad. bit of a darker blue and whatever kind of gross purple that is back there. <laughs> and an, uh, there's a particular material that I like to use for gemstones that's pretty cool. And I'll just re-grab that red and blue. So there's this material called the jelly bean material. But the jelly the jelly bean material is is pretty dark. So I'll show you guys a little trick that I like to use. Why is that being so weird? There we go. That's fine, sure. So let's go into our materials, grab our jelly bean. And the material is already applied there, so that's cool. But yeah, it's it's a little dark, right? So what I like to do with this is go into your material properties, modifiers, bump your ambient up around like 45 or so, and that will start to brighten that up and start to make it feel a little bit more gem-like. You can see the changes on the material over there. But yeah, it's a pretty cool little little material trick that I like to use on a, a little bit of a weird material. I like to use a lot of, if I'm going to use any additional materials in ZBrush, I'll pretty much always use standard materials for the most part, just because I like the ability to uh, shift my light and have my material be affected by that. Matte caps up top have a lot of that stuff baked in. 
So if you're going to be working with these, uh, or if I'm going to be working with these, uh, it just kind of depends. I'll, I'll I'll use some of these in like render passes for certain things. Oh, quick save. For the most part, while I'm just working here in ZBrush, I like to use those. Those, the bottom row, standard. Standard guys. And then there are some like more metallic-y things that we can use on these, but I would like to continue messing with that some more, so I'm gonna leave that alone. I don't really like this orange. I hope that you guys don't, because I'm gonna change it. So another cool thing that you can do with poly paint, real quick here, I know we're still in like a low poly piece, but what I like to do when I'm painting faces, and I can show you guys some techniques on the face here as well, but I'll uh, drop my RGB intensity down pretty low. When you're clicking fill object, it is looking at your RGB intensity and it's saying what percentage do you want to infill this color. So if you set it to like nine, it's saying 9% of that essentially will be filled in. If I cranked it up to 100, it'd fill uh, that full color in that I've selected. So if I want to darken that a little bit, I can do that. Or if I want to desaturate that and darken it that way, I can start doing that more and more. You get the idea. Yeah, something like that. That's fine for now. When it comes to the face though, what I'll typically end up doing is grabbing whatever base color I get in there at first, and then go a little bit more towards the warm spectrum here with a really low value. We got some material freaking out over there. And then very gently start painting in some of this at a low value. Rosie up the cheeks, nose, all these different areas around here. Maybe around the lips some more and chin. Just to start basing that out. And then once you uh, get to a little bit of a better, more finished place with that, you'll sample the, the face color again, and then just kind of blanket fill that in with whatever your, your base skin tone was. And depending on how many shadows and highlights you've painted in here, this is a very quick example, but you can start taking that range of colors and shrinking that in more and more. We'll use fill object here. Start bringing that a little bit closer together. Just like that. Cool. Well, I'm gonna probably repaint this face later. So I don't wanna do that quite yet. But what I do wanna do is fix that little material junk going on there. Just a little painting error from I don't know when or how. We'll clear that off real quick. All right. So let's see. We'll go back to our white color as well and our clay material. So uh, I definitely want to get to the uh, the uh, the face wraps here, just so we can, from a technical level, look at how I would cr go about like starting to create all these pieces. Uh, I could sit here and you know sculpt and finish this this and the anaconda. No, no, no. What the hell are these called? Not vi vi viper boat. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm, I'm blanking. I'm blanking, guys. What's the hooded snake? Hooded snake. That's what they're called now. This is a new scientific technical term because I cannot remember. King Cobra? No, that doesn't sound right. That's not it. No, that's definitely not it. <laughs> All right, so let's look at how we would do uh, these straps around, around the face. Uh, so I'd probably just toggle off my hair because it's kind of getting in the way and probably the circlet gems, all that jazz. And we'll duplicate our face so that we have a base to put this stuff on. And as I mentioned earlier, one of these techniques is gonna involve using a curve brush. So we could start wrapping this around in this fashion. But what I'm seeing instead of that is I'm seeing some very strong just block out shapes. We got like this triangular cut here across the face so instead of that let's let's do this let's uh let's dynamesh our face really low like around 200 ish or so 
And let's just start filling in, whoops, start filling in some of this junk here. Don't need any of this. Don't need any of this. Don't need any of this garbage. So we'll just clean all that off, get rid of it completely. And let's run a Z remesh too, just to make sure we're baking out all that information. And then after we're done with that, since we've been on a slice curve kick tonight, we might as well keep keep the train going. And play around with using our slice curve to create these different meshes. So, what we'll do, I'll just duplicate once here so I have one of these. Grab my slice curve brush, turn off perspective, and let's draw a line going from the head back there down around the nose. And I'll tap Alt once so I can put a little curve in this. And I'll just get one slice this way. Delete all that. And then coming across this other direction, let's see, up to about the eye. Maybe something like this. Looks good to me. Bam. All right. So now how do we use this to create our straps? We got a little bit too much, I think, information going on here. So from here, We'll do the same thing that we did before with the little circlet. I'll run an extra edge loop through here. So ZBrush knows, hey, we want to keep groups on and we want this to be, or we want this to try to avoid having some of those extra, extra polygons like that. Exactly like that. That's what we wanted to avoid or this. This shape's a little bit more complicated so let's help ZBrush out and Z remesh down to 0.1 just to bake all that out. Let's see what that does. Oh no, what happened here? Well, that's not good. Let's play a nice ZBrush. This is why I kind of wanted to destroy that form in the nose a little bit more, so I think I will kind of pull through there. So essentially the we're using the same technique that we used on our circlet by slicing up the hair. Oop, I have it hidden. To end up creating some low poly geometry. And then we'll just have to scale that up. And it's real messy right now, but it won't always be. And we can just start Pulling that around different areas. I think I think it's about time we maybe pull in these ears a little bit too. I think that'll help out with our straps around the face. Uh, I was actually gonna say if her ears aren't visible, which they poke out a little bit here, I'm just gonna chop them off. <laughs> if 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 it's not seen, a lot of the times I'll just hide stuff completely or, or remove it completely. It doesn't make sense to to keep stuff that's just never seen. Uh, like if you're sculpting, if you're sculpting a character and it's always going to be wearing the same outfit or it's always gonna have the same armor, the only reason you would make a body underneath that clothing or underneath that outfit is if you specifically needed it for something else later, for animation or or maybe that character is going to be wearing something else later, or you need to sim it, or whatever. But if if it's never seen, if it's never used for anything, don't waste your time. 
get rid of it. Which is why I would normally... I, I still might... I'm kind of considering just getting rid of the ears. This little... these five pixels over here aren't convincing me that they need to uh, stick out from the hair. I'm not convinced. I am not entertained. Alright. Alright, so we got a rough geometry strap across the face. Nice and ugly. Just the way we like our geometry. Let's just re-slice that. I, uh, I dynamesh this very quickly. Just because I wanted to clean it up. And my Ziri meshing was not playing very nice. Trying to chop that extra edge along the, the neck off down there. It's not working though. That's alright. Alright. Give me a 1k Ziri mesh, please, and don't be super messy. Oh no, so super messy. It's because my edge, my edge mistake. Let me cut this one more time here. It'll probably be clean this time. Check out that confidence. Alright, Ziri Mesh. See what that does. If that's still dirty, we'll say screw it and try something else. That's looking a, a little bit better. Why would you put a quad there? Hey, there we go. We're starting to get somewhere. Still very messy, but that's the uh, basic strat there for, for something along this these lines. Now, we still have the option of using a curved tube. This is just one technique here. But what's great about doing it this way is that you can get it to match the surface a lot more accurately. And the reason I was thinking of knocking that nose completely off is because of how uh, how flat we get through here. And I'm thinking that if the nose is never going to be seen, then why take the time to try to cover it up? Why not just get rid of it completely? So I don't know. I haven't really decided yet because I, I think it might be nice to show her without everything on her face covered up a little bit later. Doesn't matter either way to me. Let's see. Ooh, maybe we could mummy style it and uh, sew up her mouth or something. That would be cool. Uh, is there any way, let's see. Is there any way to duplicate a slice and put it next to the last one to not have to redo the same slice? Uh, I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Uh, there might be a better solution for what you're wanting. Uh, but somewhat, somewhat there is a, a way to do that. If it's a low poly piece, like this, and I draw out my slice, and I want another slice next to this, instead of slicing it again, I could use my Z modeler brush and bevel the edge loop. Like that. So now I have two slices. And if I just tap back here, it will make it the exact same width, exact same way I beveled this edge. Actually, if I tap any of these, it will bevel it in exactly the same way I did it the last time, unless I uh, grow or shrink it like this, and then I can make it whatever size I want. So it depends on what you're using it for. There's also the replay last stroke option, but uh, I don't think that's gonna do exactly what you want. You can use the Z Modeler brush on something a little bit more high poly to try that bevel option as well. You might not have as much luck though, depending on how uh, how dense your mesh is. It just kind of kind of depends. 
So there's one option that we can start playing around with. The other option is of course to start using our curve tube snap. Let's just turn all that back off for that. Whoops. And I want just this. And we can start drawing this out. Let's make sure, whoops. Let's make sure our thickness, Z intensity, is down. So that'll help there. We make our brush size larger if we want that to be wider. I'll keep it thin. For, whoa, too thin. Actually, let's 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 go bigger. Not that big. Why are you being so finicky? So I want to go larger, but if I go larger, you'll notice with your curve brushes that they don't uh, frequently drop these little points. They're called steps. So you can go into your curve menu, right down here, there it is, curve step. So if you're using a really big curve brush, you could drop this down, let's say 0.25, oh no, there we go and you get more steps for your larger brush. So maybe you wanna try something like that, and we can draw out across here, and continue that stroke. Just gotta get close here till we see that red line, and we can continue that along, and keep pulling that line all the way through, all the way till we get to the other side. So on certain curve brushes, this will reconnect and bridge this gap. But this brush that I'm using is a tri-parts welded brush, so unfortunately it won't do that. To get that to snap together, I'll have to use my uh, brush, uh, curved tube snap brush. Oh boy. So you can actually, if you guys didn't know, you can draw out a curve with one brush and then switch your brush. Here, so let's grab another one. Let's grab the IMM gun parts here. And we'll grab, actually, where's the strap one? Or the, even the zipper, even the zipper. The zipper is a tri-parts one, so is the curve. Dang it. <laughs> uh, is there one in here that's not a tri-parts? I don't know. Here. Let's try this. Curve mode. Well, bam. There you go. There's an example. Those aren't welded, but the example is that you can switch your switch your curve brush on the fly. And it also allows me with this particular brush to connect those at the end if I need to. And we can also thin that out. Way too thick for bandages or anything like that. Make that more thin. And then we can draw out more and more of these, but to make that go through, we'll have to do that. Cool. Turn that off. So there, there's two different techniques there. First one being using the slice brushes. Start getting that into place. This one's a little bit messy the way I have this now. So I don't know, I might, might fix that. Or I, I'm sorry, I might clean that up or I might just redo it completely. Fix it either way. But yeah, I can draw in more of these straps. Nose is being, nose is being nosy, kind of getting in the way. So I don't know. I think both techniques are pretty nice, pretty effective. I think the complexity of your shape defines maybe which one would be uh, better to be used in certain instances. I would say probably the more complex sh uh, the shape that you have, maybe using individual tube, like individual strokes with straps like this might be a little bit more efficient. Then you can you know, smooth those out after you're done. But with something like this, the one step that we did not do here was add the actual thickness. So add a little bit of thickness there. I would, I, I don't know, really, really I think it kind of depends. Kind of depends on the shape, maybe not how complex it is. But then we'd have to get these to work together a little bit better, of course. 
But yeah, play around with that some more. Let's see how everything else is. I can sit here and draw out the rest of these, but I at least want to make sure that we have enough time to look at how we do all this stuff. Um, I think the only other thing on the head here, straps around the neck like these, those would be a lot easier to do. I guess we could maybe do some, so here are our options. We could do a little bit more with our hair. So we only have about, let's see, I think a half hour left. Or we could look at how we would do these shapes here. And these look like some simple curved tube snap, like little little circlets. There's also, I don't know if I have my chain brush in here. My insert brushes, I don't think so. So I have some custom chain brushes. You guys can, it's not super hard to make like a little, little chain or something. I don't know, these are so tiny, but I can only assume that they're like these little type of chain, ne chain link necklaces style thing. Let's see, let's maybe look at how we would make a brush like that. I think that'll be a good use of our time. Let's go down into initialize. Hmm. No, you know what, no, let's not do that. Let's instead grab a ring 3D. Hmm. No, no, I changed my mind again. <laughs> There's always a million ways to do everything. All right, let's 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 do this. Let's initialize a cube. So just duplicate any piece of geometry to get a two, 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 two by two by two cube. A two cubed cube. And then what we'll do is grab our Z modeler brush so we can play around with this some more. I'm gonna split this edge. or vert, sorry, split it on the other side, and then Q mesh, all those polygons all the way through. And I'm gonna do a little trick here to clip these to the sides. So this is pretty much the technique of using that, that clip curve brush. But what's great about the transpose brush is that you can snap to vertices. So I've made this uh, slice through there nice and evenly now. Uh, some of these are creased, but I'm not going to want those edges to be actually creased. Thin that out. Please go away, creases. Crease, edge loop complete. Boom. And I'll delete this edge loop, maybe. There we go. Let's round that out a little bit more. And then, so this is the part where things get a little tricky. I have to think about how we would make this. So essentially this shape is going to duplicate itself multiple times along a stroke. So let's see. This is just gonna be one link in the chain. like the way that that's inflating. Inflate pushes out along the normal of the vert, I think. Let's see. I'll just kind of do this manually real quick. Actually, why am I doing that? I'll just make this smaller. Makes a heck of a lot more sense. And then essentially what I want to do is I want to like add a little corkscrew or twist to this. Uh, six it, welcome back, man. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, for those that are I have not seen the body of our character that we were working on earlier. I'll turn everything on here. 
get rid of our sphere boob. But we've started blocking... Oh, we got so much garbage up here, don't we? Garbage meshes that need to go away. We've started uh, blocking out proportionally some of this stuff in the body. It's pushed pretty far, but um, our face still needs a lot of changes. I didn't want to do that during our stream this time, though, since that's pretty much been what I've been doing on my own uh, on my own channel for the past past week or so now. So I didn't want to do the same old, same old. I wanted to switch it up. So we're looking at how we would create all the different. I'm not gonna sit here and clean this up. Can't get distracted. There's a lot of dirty stuff. We'll ignore it. Uh, but a lot of big, big proportional stuff here in the body. I've kind of just blocked that out, and I did that during uh, the stream this morning over on my my Twitch channel. And there's a link to that somewhere up here. But yeah, we've been doing a lot of these little face studies, style studies, a bunch of these, and I don't want to sit here and sculpt on a another face during our time. Maybe, you know, if people are interested in that, maybe we can do that uh, next week, because I'll be streaming at the same day, same time, most likely. But yeah, let's look at creating an interesting little chain, chain link brush. So, let's see. Rotate a little bit like that. That looks good to me. If you want to get really specific with your degrees of rotation, you can hold shift and by default that snaps to 22.5, but you can go into your preferences under transpose and set your rotation steps. This number here is divided by 90. So uh, if I set this to 10, it'll ro or if I set it to nine, right, it'll rotate every 10 degrees by holding shift. So 22.5, right? So that's 45, 72, 72.5, is that right? I don't know, 74.5, I can't remember. And then 90. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing down here, but the other way. Cool, cool. I wanna make this smaller though. <laughs> Kiro, what's going on? Welcome back. Yoroshiku, or Hisashibori, if you're going to call me Sensei. Uh, let's see, what's what's student? Gaku se, or maybe Ryu Gakuse. I know some Nihongo, what's up? I'm just gonna straight up inflate that. All right, now the trick is getting our chain links here to fit up properly. And that shouldn't be super hard. These are gonna be really tiny. So we got our, our little chain link here, right? One little link. One little link to the past. Uh, we will go into our brush here, create insert mesh new. And then I'm just gonna test this out on one of these meshes. So you got an insert mesh, that's awesome. But we wanna make that a curve brush. So turn on curve mode and we can just start drawing that out. By default, the step should be set to one which should equal about uh, roughly, I think it's like one is the length of the object, if I'm not mistaken. So let's maybe set this on like 0.5 and then try that again. Get something like that. Hmm. Raise our voice at the end of every sentence. So let's try 0.75. Bam. Dang it. Point 0.6. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I can sit here and mess with this all day and try to get that into a little bit of a better value range. But yeah, for these little 
Let's, uh, let's insert a couple of these, I guess. These, like, little... This is kind of what I'm interpreting. These little loopy, loopy doopies as it's a very technical term for loopy doopy. But we want a mesh to be able to insert that on. And what I would recommend doing is after you're happy with your brush, just go uh, into your brush palette or right here, you just click on brushes and click on save as, and then you can export that and name that whatever you want. Uh, so we want to draw one of these out. So let's make sure that we're using a correct size. Let's find something we like. We want these to be pretty tiny, don't we? So maybe around draw size 15. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll use a little bit of a larger brush at first because it'll have, I'll show you why. So maybe something like that. And if we want to adjust that curve a little bit, we can come through here and move that around. But what happens when you use a smaller brush size, you have a lot more steps happening, which means you have a lot more chances for different curves and warble and all this other stuff. Whereas if you use a larger brush size, it will take less steps and it'll have a less chance for uh, that curve getting a little a little bit messy, right? So start off with a large brush size, and then all you have to do is come through and change your brush size to 15 after you've drawn out your stroke, and then you got that looking pretty good. You can realign that if you want to move that around. Another thing you can do to clean up your your the stroke of your curve is click on smooth, and that you can click that as many times as you want, and you can see that it's kind of starting to smooth that stroke out, and then I just click to update. Just like that. Yeah, I don't know, cool, looks, looks good to me. We'll just click, apply that to our surface, delete the excess geometry that we applied that from, and for something like this, I just use a real big move brush and maybe like move that into place a little bit better, something like that. And then I'd go through and I'd repeat the same process for the rest of these. Yeah, that's how I'd do something like that. And these are still low poly. I tried to make these as low poly as I could because I knew that there would most likely be a lot of them. But then I can just use dynamic smooth if I just want to visually see what that looks like. Or I can actually add a subdivision or maybe two. But just be aware that when you subdivide it, it multiplies your poly count by about four. Cool. Let's see how we're doing on time. Well, oh, I missed some things. So easy. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. I think it's easy. Um, let's see. <laughs> Not faith animation. Not faith animation. That's, that's good stuff. Uh, so keep them as separate models. Why not attach it? Uh, which part? Which part? Attach which part? Um, are you talking about the individual links? Why not have these be attached? Because that's not how it works in real life. The, each individual link would be separated. And then if you want, you can even run an auto groups or something on these or control click and drag on one. And if you want to add some, some, uh, not asymmetry, but non-uniformity. That's, that's my word of the day. If you want to add some non-uniformity, you could go about doing that that way. But yeah, continue to draw those out. Let's see. What else? We got we got a little bit more time here. <laughs> I'm being serious. I didn't realize it would be that easy. Yeah. I mean, it's not that hard to create custom brushes. And then like there's like these little speckles that they've kind of just used some kind of I, I don't know. It looks like they've just clicked with their paintbrush, but I would interpret that as maybe um hmm maybe we could just add Kind of here, it's just like more of these kind of hanging down, more of the same brush. 
We would want to remember that our brush size was set to 15, so that if we wanted to do this again, we'd make sure that these are always coming out the same, same size. So if we wanted to add some, I know this isn't exactly where it's happening, it's more down here on the hair, but just for example, look at that. And then, whoa, it's gonna freak out there a little bit, so I'll probably just try to pull that a little closer. And then, you know, move that to link on there at one of these spots. Not doing a great job. Okay, I'll just push that in with my move brush real quick. So link that up. So that's how I would do this area. And then, I don't know, we could add some kind of like really small flat charm or something that these could represent these little, little speckled pieces. I don't think that would be super hard. Plus we could also attach them to areas uh, where, where some of these connections aren't, aren't super clean. But this is so, so tiny that Really, it's not something that I think, you know, anybody's going to sit here with a microscope at and zoom in on. Uh, the, the balls on the links, like these little things, yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. I was saying that, like, instead of a, an actual ball or sphere, it's kind of hard to interpret what those are. So, instead of that, maybe... Maybe just a little flat piece that we could get into position. And then if you want to add a, an attached link to this, an extra link, or if you just want to blend that in with another one. Like I said, these are so small that I don't think anybody's going to sit here with a microscope on your stuff. But yeah, I don't know, some kind of little charm if you want to shape it up in a different way. Or use a different shape. I just used a little little creased cylinder. I, uh, I've actually appended a few different brush, or not brushes, but uh, objects here to my insert multi-mesh primitive brush. I, really, I, I love this thing. I love the IMM primitive brush. It's just lacking by default a few of these extra little pieces. A creased cylinder, which I make a lot in a perfect cube. Perfect cube is just a uh, a perfectly four-sided cube. The uh, the default cube is a uh, Q cube. Q cube is a two by two by two cube. So it's still like I prefer just having six sides, six perfect sides. So I'll do that that way. There actually I, I really don't know. There might be a way like in the brush mod. You might be able to like change that. I don't know. There's there's a lot of weird stuff that the brush modifier effects on different brushes and you never really know until you play with it so i don't know maybe there is a way by default uh let's see uh then you would parent the chains to the headdress if you animated the model and you wanted the headdress to move them could do that yeah if you're gonna take these somewhere else out of zbrush here for animation let's see Mithril, Mithril Biata says, impressive. Well, thanks, man. Hopefully, out of all the techniques we've covered, we've learned something new today. Um, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play around with my snake for the next, uh, next 10 minutes or so before I get kicked out of here. Because we got somebody else jumping on stream. I'll, uh, I'll check out who that is. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the techniques that I'm I'm using here on on me snack. Let's see. I think we'll make this a little bit more thin down through here. Yeah, creating a rig for all these different things. I don't know if you could just simulate that pretty easily. But if you wanted to actually rig all these, that'd be really kind of it wouldn't be tough, it would just be tedious. I don't know the uh, best way to go about that kind of thing though. Let's see. 
I want to line that up and wrap that around a lot better because it feels very stuck on right now. I'll uh, hide that little chain link that we just made. Don't really need that, do we? Let's see. I feel like that's actually attached there. Maybe we can do something else to make that feel a little bit more at home. I've just inserted these little gemstones up here real quick. I kind of want to change the head shape because it doesn't feel super great to me. I'm not super concerned about it though. Like I said, it's... The, the, the only reason I would sit here and play with this and, and make this more clean is because it's directly at the front of the head. It's kind of a, somewhat of a main feature, even though it is small. Uh, let's see. You guys don't want you guys don't want me to play with my snake. What? Guys, get your get your minds out of the gutter. I'm talking about our, our king cobra that I remembered very well earlier. I knew that this was a cobra, and no one. No one say otherwise. I, I know my types of snacks. So for the stroke pattern on the body, let's see. I'll probably use my MH cut brush. I'll just like pull through here. I could probably use a few more polygons. So let's see. Whoa, come back. And just start pulling these through. I'm just trying to keep these relatively uniform, not really changing my brush stroke size or anything. those all the way through. As it, as it wraps around, it gets a little more difficult to see up in here, so I'll just have to hide junk so that I can actually see what's going on. Not a very clean line, is it? All right, so something like that. And you know, we could sit here and play with our snake all day, <laughs> edit all this stuff. It looks like maybe this silhouette wise, the, the bottom here really kinda, kinda like juts forward a little bit more. It's a nice silhouette, it's got a cool shape. I don't think we've represented it perfectly here, but in a short amount of time, We've got the basic shape down. We just need to, I think, sit here and tweak with some of this stuff. Let's see. The Lapidea family. Is that, a, is that a snake family? We we throwing around scientific terms now? <laughs> uh, customize a texture that you found online? I don't think you're gonna find 
exactly the texture that you need for sculpting this kind of pattern. It takes five seconds to sculpt, as you just saw. Like, not, not tough. Um, I prefer I prefer to use my own stuff a lot of the time, but if there is something that I can use that's going to make something easier, might as well use it. Like the MAH cut brush. Awesome, awesome brush. Love it. Love it to death. I'm talking about this this thing here. It essentially uh, is a dam standard and pinch brush combined. It's really, really nice. Creates a really clean stroke. Helps to force geometry to go the direction that you want it. Kind of like the pinch brush. That's kind of what I use the pinch brush for a lot. If I'm like, oh, I want to start pulling this out here. I'll use some trim and some pinch. and Just kind of play with that a little bit. I was trying to clean up our edge because it was really, uh, really nasty. Trying to just even that out, trim some of it up. And if I, if we kind of look at the inside of this, it's kind of tough to see, but it's not exactly a uniform silhouette all the way through. So that's. That's some stuff that I kind of care about when I'm looking at these these clean shapes through here. Just making sure that that's looking good. I think that's starting to feel quite a bit better along the hood there. Just trim out the rest of this. Careful that our silhouette's not getting too crazy. Cool. All right, cool. I guess we could maybe plop a material on there real quick. Material and color. I don't. I don't. I'm really not a huge fan of a lot of the. Um, metallic stuff in here, blend shapes. So typically what I do if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to render a metallic kind of material in ZBrush, I'll use multiple render passes with like the basic material too and stuff to uh, get some reflective passes on stuff. Just because there's not any one particular material that I'm super fond of. Those are Folygon seconds, mind you. <laughs> oh, the five seconds to uh, sculpt that texture that I said. I don't know, I, it didn't take long. I don't think it'll... I don't think that's like a really hard shape to reproduce. What I... I mean, I... I kind of get anal about stuff, so... I'm like, no, it needs to be, needs to be perfect, and I'll, I'll up the res and really come through here and make sure each one of these has a real nice clean cut, and then maybe I'll, you know, I don't know. There's, there's so much that we can do here to play around with these shapes and define these. The more kind of beveled edges that you have on something like this, the more it changes the silhouette and the harder light's going to hit that and just make that stand out even more. So that reads a lot better. This edge will always read better from a distance compared to these. So I don't know, maybe I could go back through and do those. I, or, I mean, it's all up to you. Go, go crazy. The sky's, the sky's the limit, right? I don't really want to sit here and paint this up. But yeah, I think we're pretty close to the end of our time today. So if you guys have any additional questions, now will be the time to get them in. I don't know what that voice was, but 
sorry. Let's see. I don't know. I can play around with a bunch of stuff here. It's kind of using that light, light brush stroke, light RGB value. Don't really want to paint that like a real snake, do we? Can we select a mask by polygroups? Uh, you can mask by polygroups. Just grab your transpose or your 3D gizmo line, control click on a polygroup, and it will mask off everything except for that polygroup. Control click flips your polygroup or mask. So, yeah. Same thing with uh, selections. Control shift click uh, unhides everything, but dragging flips the selection. Um, let's see, it looks better with, with multiple render passes. I mean, everything, everything's going to look better with multiple, multiple render passes through here. But yeah. So, uh, if you're jumping here at the end, not a problem. The, uh, streams get uploaded on the, uh, Pixelogic YouTube channel, uh, after, after everything's done. I do the same thing on my YouTube channel, or on my... Twitch channel, everything goes up on my YouTube channel after. So for this guy uh, and, and all these other characters that I've been working on, if you have if you want to check out the process for that or if you've missed any of this, definitely, uh, definitely check that out over on my YouTube channel. And then of course, uh, there's a link somewhere up here, Twitch TV slash Polygon with an underscore at the end. That's my Twitch channel where you guys can come and hang out at... Uh, at noon, noon Eastern US time, Eastern Standard Time. But yeah, definitely come and hang out. Let's see, anything else in chat here? Any way to use live booleans without clicking make boolean mesh? Can you just cut it out? Uh, you can use Dynamesh for, for booleans as well. It doesn't use the live boolean system, but you can pre-visualize stuff with live booleans and then just Dynamesh subtract it out the old school way. Uh, let's see. Can you upload a short edited video with explanation? Uh, if you're looking for a specific explanation, absolutely. <laughs> uh, or you can always, like I say, email me if you guys have any additional questions. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's going to be it, guys. I think the only thing I'll shout out here at the end real quick, since I haven't done so yet, I don't think. Uh, I have a link. Oh, I don't have a link down below because we're not on my stream. Uh, if you just go to gumroad.com slash Folygon, you'll find my Gumroad page where if you're new to ZBrush and digital sculpting, I have my quick start course if you guys are interested in uh, getting up and running as quick as you possibly can. I also have some intermediate and advanced stuff on there as well. So uh, definitely check that out. I would greatly appreciate it. I also have the base mesh that I'm using right now on there you guys want to check that out. And then I have a few, I think this was the most recent thing I uploaded, five little sculptural uh, mannequins of just some bases that you guys can play around with. Uh, somebody asked, uh, a few people asked on Instagram if I would upload these, so I just threw all five up there for a dollar. But yeah, check that out. Again, uh, definitely subscribe here on the, or not subscribe, but follow here on the Twitch, uh, Twitch channel for Pixelogic. Uh, check out the uh, YouTube channel later if you guys miss anything. And I will see you guys either next Tuesday, where I'm streaming here again at the same time, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, or on my Twitch channel at, uh, at noon Eastern Time. Every day, except for Sunday. But yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, I don't see any other additional questions here. <laughs> Thank you, Engine. I appreciate it a lot, man. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, everybody. Uh, definitely, definitely click that follow button down below, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your night. And uh, yeah, all right, peace out guys.